Good to see you, everyone. My name is Robbie Howell, and typically on this channel, I talk about adding new civilizations and units to Age of Empires 2. But a few weeks back, I tried a new format where I took a look at the existing Saracens civilization and saw how many civilizations I could potentially see splitting it into if it were given a comprehensive Dynasties of India style treatment. But single civilizations are not the only ways we can explore possible civilization adds in a more broad scale sense rather than the more granular detail I go into on my typical builds. There are plenty of highly underdeveloped regions of the world that we can also explore in a similar way. And because of that, I'd like to ask you today, just how much do you think we can add to West Africa? It's not a question that's easy to answer, since West Africa is a very underexplored region. We don't have a lot of really reliable recorded history alongside a lot of modern revisionism to make for a very incomplete and often misleading picture. That being said, I think that West Africa is absolutely ripe for new civilization adds to the game. And because of that, I wanted to share with you all the notes and research I had personally done on what more the region may have in store for us. Before we jump in, however, I want to not only hear from you, but also give special credit to a certain user on my Discord. Join that below if you'd like to participate in our fun little theory crafting community, namely Tamadon. He is exceptionally knowledgeable and has run a great deal of very interesting polls on the Age of Empires forums, asking people what civilizations they would add. And as such, he knew a lot more about West Africa than I did. We got talking and he agreed to contribute some of his own civilization ideas. I'm proud to say I came to many of them myself as well, but he had a couple of very useful additions that I just would never have thought of. And as such, Temujin, I salute you. I should also note that while I am using the Malians Ensign for this presentation, this is not a Malians split. We just don't have any other West African civilizations. And as such, I kind of have to default to them. There will be a few civilizations here that I think you could very easily subdivide out of the Malians, um, but that's not going to be the totality of what we look at. Also of note, I'm not including North Africa in this assessment, or specifically like Super Saharan Africa. So because of that, we won't see any Berber split type civilizations. We're just going to be focusing on the Sub-Saharan and Mid-Saharan powers that were relevant during the AOE2 timeframe. A final note before we go further, you aren't going to be hearing from me for a probably a couple of months at least. I'm having another child quite soon and as such need to devote time to my family. So you can expect maybe one more very small, more personal video and I will be trying to be active over text in the Discord server, but it will be very hard for me to keep up with comments and I definitely won't be able to post new content for a while. So I'll be taking a little bit of a break, but you can expect to see me in the not terribly distant future. All that out of the way, let's move into West Africa. What have I done on this channel thus far in West Africa? Well, I have made two civilizations. The first one, the Soninke, were my third ever civilization theory craft. I initially called them the Wagadugans, but updated them in one of my many recraft videos. They represented, broadly speaking, the old Ghana Empire, which was also known as Wagadu, uh, and also a couple of the splinter states that broke apart when they fell, and also a couple of the later subsequent splinter states that formed after the Mali Empire fell. So kind of a grab bag for old central western Africa, including a lot of the Malian regions. The Sonenke could definitely be considered a true subdivision of the Malians, the current Malians civilization. I had them as a camel civilization with a really powerful late game gold eco, so there are some similarities to the current Malians. I did try to allude to and reference them as much as I could without being reductive. Um, and they definitely had a similar kind of army comp and style to the Malians, as in they had quite a lot of variety in their army, but not a ton of power. They just kind of elevated it. They ratcheted that up to 11 uh, and had like much, much sub more substantial weaknesses than the Malians, but also clearer strengths. Though there were some big differences in their army comps, such as their major focus on camels. Now, the other of the West African civilizations I've tackled are the Mosse. Uh, the Mosse were my fourth 
ever build, so another very old one. Uh, both of these civilizations have received quite a bit of love in recrafts over the years. Uh, and the Mosse represent a set of federated kingdoms that were roughly ethnically homogenous with each other, but incorporated a whole lot of local tribal peoples as they migrated up out of what is now Ghana into Burkina Faso and Niger. Were they coming out of Ghana? I think they were coming out of what is now Ghana. I can't remember. But either way, uh, I had the Mosse as a very powerful cav focused civilization with a very early game playstyle and a huge focus on raiding. Their cavalry really was quite unparalleled, but they had a lot of other very substantial weaknesses in terms of their infantry and siege. They are very specifically not a Malians split. Uh, though I will say that most of the civilizations on this list, if you were to put them in a campaign right now, they would almost certainly be repped by the Malians, even if that was entirely inaccurate. So the Mose still fall into kind of the Malian subdivision bucket insofar as campaign representation goes. But they play completely differently from how the current Malian civilization plays and were fairly unique among other AOE2 civs as well, if I do say so myself. Um, last thing I would want to point out is the Caravanserai. This is a building that I first featured on my Swahili build. It is obviously just kind of a, a re-adaptation of the current Caravanserai build, but substantially buffed such that it affected all units beyond just trade, but affected trade even more. Uh, it was a little bit more expensive to compensate. And the reason I bring that up here is that even though Caravanserais were most known for their use along the Silk Road, um, similar buildings, trade centers, uh, merchant trading posts and such existed in many different large trade routes and trade hubs all over the world, and West Africa was definitely one of those places, so I felt that Kadavansarai could easily slot into a number of these civilizations. In fact, I probably should put it on the Soninke next time I do a recraft. So that's what I have done in regards to West Africa thus far on the channel, but there is more that I think the region has for us. In fact, I think there's a lot more. So let me take you on a quick crash course through it, starting with some new contenders, civilizations that I think are perfect fits and that I would expect to see pretty high on the priority list whenever, not if, when West Africa is revisited by the developer team. First of all, the Songhai. Uh, the Songhai Empire was a successor to Mali, though it did not directly originate from the Malian Empire, more like the, the peripheries of the Malian Empire, centered around Gao. This is a city that I believe is also in modern day Mali, but has a very different culture, or at least did at the time. They were a true Muslim power that was a lot more relevant in like the 13 to 1500s, like the later end of the AOE2 relevant time frame, crusading against their fellow West African neighbors and very notably clashing with the Mose over a very protracted period. So not only did they reflect a very different culture within Africa and a very different time frame, but they also had a very different army comp. I, I see them as being like a, a late game heavy cavalry and monks civilization with maybe some navy because they were known to do a lot of like river combat action. Uh, and because of that, they would probably end up playing a lot more like, I don't know, something like the, the Byzantines or the Teutons than something like the Malians or my own Mose. Add to that the Songhai's historical prominence, and they are an obvious pick in my opinion. But they are not the only obvious pick. The Edo are another excellent choice. The Kingdom of Benin, you might have heard about it, had famously large and sophisticated walls and a very complex governmental structure. Um, it lasted a very long time. It not the same as modern Benin, I should note. It was kind of nearby, but the modern state just kind of took the name of the famous old kingdom to boost their cred, kind of like Ghana did with the Ghana Empire that came well over a millennium before. Uh, so the Edo would probably be a defensive civilization representing the kingdom of Benin's famous walls and similar, uh, with a very good early eco and some like late game payoffs of some kind. I like the idea of them being a very turtling and base building focused civilization, because that's a lot of what we know about the Kingdom of Benin. Uh, a very iconic civilization within West Africa, though painfully understudied as with much else out of that country. So while I don't think there's quite as much material as with the Songhai, you gotta do them. I, I think they're a mandatory inclusion at some point, even if it's going to be hard to get perfect historicity by any stretch of the imagination with them. But perfect historicity is not mandatory. Anyways, the Hausa are another excellent contender for this hypothetical West African expansion. Uh, they were a series of states formed in northern Nigeria, uh, making up a number of very important trading posts that kind of linked 
uh, Super-Saharan Africa to Sub-Saharan Africa, but not through Mali. And much like the Songhai, they also converted to Islam. They were relevant for a great many centuries and traded and battled with many of their neighbors, like the Mosei and the Mali and the Songhai, I believe, as well. And I see them as being more of a mid-game civilization, uh, kind of uh, aggressive, but not with any single specialization, um, but having a decent amount of focus on trade and team play. I think that could give them a fairly interesting niche, though. I'll be honest, this is one of the civilizations on this list I know less about, and is one of Temujin's best suggestions. Now, uh, beyond these three, there's one more major contender I want to put out there, namely the Fula, or the Fulani. Uh, they were a sub-Saharan African people who kind of dwelled in the northern part of that region. Uh, they had a lot of Berber influence and were politically relevant from very, very early times, at least in terms of West Africa, where it's very hard to find records before like the 8th or 9th century. And the Fula were relevant pretty much from that point onwards, maybe even earlier as well. Um, so I describe them as being kind of a connector people, one of the major thoroughfares by which Islamic culture moved down into Africa proper. Um, they also had an empire, the Great Fulo Empire, that would come in, like again, the later stages of the AOE2 relevant time frame. But you could also throw them in as representing some of the smaller, earlier West African states, like Takrur, uh, that I believe came after the fall of Ghana, but was probably a thing before then as well. So you could sprinkle them in a couple of places, but the Great Fulo Empire is definitely where we would want to be focusing our attention on them. Uh, they would definitely be a cavalry or camel civilization, kind of like the Berbers, but I want to give them a nice late game power spike to represent Great Fulu, uh, and I'd also want their, obviously their playstyle to be very, very different from the Berbers, maybe a slightly bigger focus on technology and development to represent how they kind of were like a, a middleman between two great cultures, and probably with a more expansive tech tree than the Berbers. Just at a guess though, if I were to do a vid on them, research might prove otherwise. And with that, we come to the end of my major four top contenders for addition to West Africa. A pretty nice variety. I don't see too much overlap between these civilizations. You see a couple of cav stuff. You see a bunch of kind of mixed stuff. There's a pretty good grab bag, both of, of course, cultures and histories, but also of play styles that I think could make for some really lovely expansion and definition within the region. But that's not all I want to talk about. There are also long shots, civilizations that either don't really have as much prominence as the ones before, or there just isn't as much research about, or I just don't know enough to make a very strong call on any of them. But I would be happy to consider each and every one of these long shots. Firstly, the Akan. Uh, what is now modern Ghana has housed the Akan people for quite a long time. They even played an, a part in the early Wagadu Empire, like or early Ghana Empire. But this civilization, the Akan, would mostly be focused on their later Bonoman kingdom, uh, as well as another uh, nation called Akwamu. Uh, the Akan were a very trade and mercantile oriented people, so I could see actually cannibalizing a little bit of my current Soninke build, which does directly reference things like Akan and also Jolof, which we'll get to later, uh, and splitting out a few of maybe their trade or gold things so that the Akan can get a piece of that pie and also develop their own unique identity. Not entirely sure they're placed, although that's one of the consequences of not having done a ton of research on them yet. Another long shot, the one I like quite a lot as well, the Yoruba, uh, the Oyo Empire in what is now Benin, not the Benin, not the Kingdom of Benin, that was somewhere else. <laughs> it's very, very complicated in Africa, as you can see. But anyways, the Yoruba in the Oyo Empire uh, were relevant from the 1300s and onward. Uh, they were very impactful outside of the AOE2 relevant time frame, so like after 1600 AD, but they did have a part to play before then as well. They were a coastal people, if I recall correctly, and I see them as being like a hyper late game civilization representing the heights that they would climb to outside of AOE2, um, with really good power and having like a good blend of infantry, cavalry, maybe some navy in there as well, but a vulnerable early game. It's a familiar archetype, and it's one that I don't think would be quite matched by any other African civilization besides perhaps the Songhai, and I'm sure there's many ways we can differentiate the two. But as with all other long shots, further research may prove otherwise. I, I could be completely wrong about any of these. Uh, another long shot though, the Jolof or Wolof. Uh, these are one of my personal favorite African civilizations, and up until I had my conversation with Temujin, I didn't think that they would merit a civilization. I was wrong. 
So the Dolo for a Mali splinter state um, that were way on the, the west coast of Africa in what I believe is now Senegal. Um, and they kind of formed their own small but robust state. You could maybe even have them represent Takror earlier, but I think that's a better fit for the, the Fulani, or the Fula, I should say. Um, but very interestingly about the Jolof, not only did they form a very powerful military despite their relatively small size, but they also had the most contact with Europe out of pretty much any African nation pre-1500 AD. They had a close alliance with Portuguese. Um, at one point, I believe a Jolof prince even hid among the Portuguese from political rivals, so they were actually close, actual allies. And the Jolof adopted a lot of European technology. A gunpowder African civilization with like defensive and ally-oriented stuff sounds so sick. Um, and maybe you could give them some infantry as well. I, I could also see, again, stealing some stuff off of my Soninke build since my Soninke build um, it was my third build, and as such, I just kind of like bundled in a bunch of stuff kind of clumsily. This is a perfect opportunity for me to correct that and, and split them out as they deserve to be split. Beyond these three, however, a few more quick long shots for you. The Soso, famous antagonists of Sunjata, featuring prominently in his campaign. They actually originate in what is now Guinea. Uh, and they were a, a successor to the Ghana Empire, who kind of capitalized on the, the fractured splinter states that the Ghana Empire's collapse created, swept in, established their own state, gained a lot of power, and also heavily resisted Islam. They were like some of the proudest West African animists of, like, they and the Mosse were like the two big anti-Islam factions that I have found within Western, like, medieval Western Africa. Uh, and the, the Soso, I thought, would be really interesting as, like, a cavalry monk civilization, but not like your normal monks, some sort of like agro-animist monk. Because obviously, very famously, uh, Sumanguru, uh, Sunjata's antagonist, was known to be a great sorcerer, right? But the Soso magic seems to have gone deeper than that. And there was a lot of, um, a lot of fear and superstition by their enemies around the powers of the Soso. And so I think that having like agro-monks could be kind of a cool way of representing that and bringing in like that unique bit of flavor. Because we have a lot of Cav monk civs, but I want to make sure that they play differently from all of those others. And I'm sure there's other ways to differentiate them as well. I like the Soso quite a lot, but there's very little known about them. And that's the end of my long shots, but I did promise you a few more civilizations. Hence we move on to the ultra long shots. These are ones I know almost nothing about and have only the slightest inkling, but still I could easily be convinced on. The Dahomey are one. Uh, the Dahomey are a, a union of two peoples, uh, again, in what is now Benin, or, or the, the coastline kind of near Benin. The Fon and Aja people united into the Dahomey only towards the very end of the AOE2 relevant time frame, and though they both did have their own states before then, I couldn't find anything in a quick Google indicating that they had any relevance whatsoever. And I think that this timing is the main thing that makes them an ultra long shot. Um, Though that being said, there is quite a lot known about the Dahomey. For example, uh, the Gabedo on the Malians, that was actually a Dahomey thing. They were the, a female warrior corps called the Dahomey Amazons, though they were not like devoted knife throwers. Like they, they fought much more conventionally than that. Uh, and as such, the, the Gabedo is a, a big long shot to be a Malian thing when the Dahomey were not only separated by them uh, from them by like, I think well over a thousand miles of space, uh, but also by several hundred years. So, like, maybe for that alone, the Dahomey deserve a spot. Uh, I'm really on the fence about them, but I love the civilization and would love to justify it being included. Um, they would be, like, a super late-game civilization with, like, incredible elites and garbage trash. Like, the Turks of Africa is kind of how I'm conceiving of them. Maybe with a more defensive playstyle and worse cav. Uh, and the Ibo. This is another interesting faction. This one also coming from what is now Nigeria. Uh, their kingdom, the kingdom of Nri, uh, was in, I believe, South Nigeria along the coast. It was a rather small state that was somewhat isolationist during the AOE2 relevant time frame. Um, it wasn't very impactful, but it was quite notable for being extremely religious. I believe it almost like the, the king of Nri was worshipped almost like a, like a god emperor or something. And Nri was like notably non-militant. And so I think Temujin himself actually recommended that the Igbo maybe be added as like a really quirky mega monk civilization that like only converted people and like barely ever fought themselves, which 
Sounds sounds kind of wacky even by my standards, but God, it sounds cool. Like, I'd love to make that civilization work. And lastly, the Nupe. The Nupe would be the easternmost of all the civilizations in West Africa that I am tabling thus far. Uh, they were rivals to the Yoruba, who I mentioned earlier, uh, and were notable for two things. One, there being almost no information about them during the AOE2 relevant time frame. Uh, and also, they actually had cavalry, despite being below the Tsitsi Belt. And the Tsitsi Belt is like a geographical designation representing like a cutoff point in Africa where large domesticated animals just aren't feasible anymore because they get eaten alive by the brutal Tsitsi fly. So you can't really raise horses or cows or pigs below the Tsitsi Belt. But the Nupe did, and it's not entirely clear how or why, like whether they imported or they had like a special way of raising or tending their horses or something. Um, there is some evidence that they actually had like diplomatic relationships as far away as Byzantium, which if true is unbelievably cool and makes me feel like they're more justified to be added to the game. Um, but it's very hard to find information about these guys, at least on the internet. Uh, probably a cavalry civilization. I'm not sure. Again, it's hard to find anything. Uh, I guess now is as good a time as any to say that if you know anything about any of these civilizations and can provide me sources that I can consult online, um, please message me over Discord. Uh, you can drop it in a comment as well, but Discord is even better because it's a lot harder for me to lose a message on Discord. Having good sources is the main barrier that stops me from acting on a lot of the civilizations I'm talking about here. And that's all the civilizations, but there's one more thing I'd like to cover, namely regionals. Much like I did in my Saracens video, um, I love regional units and would want to be trying to introduce or at least propose some new West African-oriented regional units in some or all of the civilizations from that region I table from now into the future. And there's a couple of bog standard ones I wanna go over first. Um, to start with, in that Saracen video once more, I proposed a whole bunch of new camel type units, camel scouts and camel lancers and camel archers and blah, 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 blah. And there's a whole debate back and forth on how viable and how historical they'd be. I cover it there. Uh, and plenty of West African civilizations would receive camel units. However, the much more interesting unit I wanna talk about is the knife thrower. So you know the Gebeto, right? Uh, they throw that funky looking thing. So that, uh, you could describe it as a knife ax. And those sort of throwing knife axes were really important in Sub-Saharan Africa. Not only were they a fairly common weapon, um, not only were they like omnipresent across the region and every single people had their own like different variety of how to design them and the shape and the creation of them. Not only is it an absolutely iconic weapon of Western Africa and a little bit of the rest of Africa as well, but I think that the way the Gabedo handles it is absolutely freaking stupid. <laughs> Why is it that this light weapon, known for its speed and susceptibility to powerful armor, do like as much damage as some gunpowder weapons? It's very, very weird to me. So my proposal for the knife thrower would be that it has be like a, a fast ranged infantry unit um, that has much lower damage than a Gabedo, but a high rate of fire. So it's like a skirmisher throwing action that you can zip around with, chuck, run, chuck, and just be an absolute pest with. Uh, in terms of the unit's name, um, you could use one of the regional names for this weapon, like the Mambele or the Kapinga or the Nzapo or Osele. Um, or you could try to do something more generic, you know, knife thrower, elite knife thrower, imperial knife thrower, some crap like that. I'm not entirely sure how I will personally handle it yet, um, nor how I will handle, like, the specific differences in how certain designs of knife axe were were implemented across different parts of West Africa. To give you an idea of how important this weapon was, there were some parts of Africa that used these weapons, these like throwing knife axes, as currency, or at least sometimes as currency, or as ceremonial weapons as well. Ridiculously important. It's silly to me we don't have it as a regional already. And as a aside, I love throwing axes and did a video ages ago, like months before I started doing Age of Empires content, specifically talking about throwing axes. So if you're interested in the topic, take a look up here. Uh, the last thing I'd like to talk about with the knife thrower is that I'd want them to be available early. Now, I know that people say I push the boundaries a little too much with when I make things available, but the fact that 
we have so few options and feudal age consistently makes me sad. Because of that, I would want the knife thrower to be a feudal age available unit with upgrades throughout the ages beyond. Um, again, how exactly it is implemented remains to be seen, but I'm sure we'll be doing more West African builds on this channel in the future. And when we do, it will be discussed. But with that, oh, but, oh yeah, wow. <laughs> Jeez, I think I gotta stop using that transition slide because OBS really, really hates it. Anyways, that's what I would do with West Africa. Now I want to know what you guys think. Uh, do you think I missed anything big in terms of civilizations or even regionals? Um, which of the civilizations I tabled would you personally add? Do you think that my breakdown of like prime contenders, long shots, and ultra long shots are all appropriate, or would you like reshuffle any within those subclassifications? Um, how much do you think that we should add to West Africa overall? Um, I think it's a very underrepresented region that I'd love to see more of, but are there other parts of the world that you think deserve higher priorities still? And of course, as always, what else would you like to see me do on this channel going forward? Once more, I am going to be gone for a couple months on my paternity leave. I will, again, try to be available in Discord if you'd like to pop on there. Can't promise I will be, but I'm going to be doing my best. And if you have any information on any of these civilizations, any sources you'd like to share with me, again, please do hit me up. I am always interested in finding good sources. And so I hope to hear from you if you do. But until then, my name is Robbie Howell. When you next see me, I will be plus one son and ciao for now.